In the lab, many of the chemicals that we come into contact with are potentially hazardous. Formaldehyde, a common laboratory substance, is no exception, but it is special. Health problems from mishandling formaldehyde can be extremely serious. So serious that the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, has created a standard for working safely with materials that contain formaldehyde. The standard includes a list of health problems associated with overexposure to formaldehyde. They range from the short-term discomfort of minor burns or skin irritation to chronic effects from prolonged periods of overexposure. Symptoms are easy to recognize. External contact may cause short-term irritation to the skin, eyes, and mucous membranes. Inhaling formaldehyde gas or vapors can induce coughing, nausea, violent vomiting, diarrhea, and laryngitis. Breathing in extremely high concentrations of formaldehyde can bring on convulsions, a coma, or even death. The effects of long-term exposure to high levels of formaldehyde may not appear right away, but in time, serious problems can develop. Since formaldehyde is a suspected carcinogen and mutagen, overexposure increases the risk of developing cancer. Formaldehyde is also a chronic toxin. As a result, repeated or prolonged exposure can result in permanent respiratory damage. Most of these situations can be helped with medical treatment. So if you think you're developing symptoms of overexposure, report them to your supervisor immediately. Now that we've looked at the health hazards that are associated with formaldehyde, let's take a look at how we can protect ourselves when we're working with it. First, if you're working with high concentrations of formaldehyde or work with it frequently, you may need to monitor the amount of formaldehyde that you're exposed to. This is done through testing the air in your immediate work area by taking individual samples. The test results are then compared to OSHA's permissible exposure limit for formaldehyde, which is expressed in parts per million. The current permissible exposure limit is 0.75 parts per million. This limit is calculated for an 8-hour time-weighted average of exposure. If the average level of formaldehyde in the air reaches or exceeds the PEL, you'll need to take special precautions until the levels are reduced. For some tasks, looking at an 8-hour average of exposure may mask the presence of temporarily high levels of formaldehyde. So to prevent overexposure in these situations, OSHA has established short-term exposure limits, or STELs. These limits are based on an exposure period of 15 minutes. OSHA's short-term exposure limit for formaldehyde exposure is no more than 2 parts per million. This may seem like a lot of numbers, but exposure limits have been set up for your protection. So make sure that you pay attention to them. If you have any questions, see your supervisor. The formaldehyde standard also contains a set of training requirements so that everyone who is using the substance knows how to work with it safely. Because the adverse health effects of formaldehyde can be so serious, OSHA requires annual training for all employees who are exposed to levels of one-tenth part per million or higher. For starters, you need to know where formaldehyde is used in your workplace and how you can limit hazardous exposure. Container labeling plays a major role in providing this type of information. Labels on mixtures and solutions containing more than one-tenth percent formaldehyde must state specifically that formaldehyde is present and that physical and health hazard information is available from your employer and the mixture safety data sheet, the SDS. 
This labeling is also required for any material capable of releasing formaldehyde into the air at concentrations of one-tenth parts per million or higher. Mixtures and solutions containing more than one-fifth percent formaldehyde and materials capable of releasing five-tenth parts per million of formaldehyde must be labeled with the following warnings. Sensitization of the skin and respiratory system, eye and throat irritation, and acute toxicity. These labels must also specifically state that formaldehyde is a potential cancer hazard. If this information cannot all fit on the container label itself, the label will direct you to other sources of information such as the SDS. The SDS will also tell you how to avoid overexposure while you're working with formaldehyde. In the past, many facilities that used formaldehyde had to purchase it at 100%, then dilute it to the strength they needed. If you're involved in this type of blending process, you should be especially careful. Nowadays, most formaldehyde comes already diluted in dispenser containers or unit packages. But you still need to pay attention to how to handle it. Even in a diluted form, formaldehyde can be hazardous. There's a reason that OSHA's hazard warning requirements begin at solutions containing only one-tenth of one percent. The most basic way of shielding yourself from hazardous levels of exposure to formaldehyde is through personal protective equipment. Gloves are a good place to start. Protective gloves are often designed to be used with specific substances or hazards. When you're working with formaldehyde, OSHA requires you to choose gloves that are impervious to solutions of 1% or more. Solutions containing more than 1% formaldehyde also require you to wear splash-resistant goggles that provide complete protection for the eyes. With some jobs, a face shield may also be required to protect your skin. But don't consider face shields as a substitute for goggles. Even with a face shield, goggles are required if there's any danger of formaldehyde reaching the eye area. Where formaldehyde gas is present, you may need to use an air purifying respirator to protect your nasal passages, throat, and lungs. You must undergo training and a fit test whenever you're issued a new respirator and at least once a year thereafter. When you receive your respirator, you'll also be given the appropriate filter cartridge for the level of formaldehyde in your work area. See your supervisor for information about your facility's respiratory protection program. It will discuss the proper selection, training, and fit testing of respirators, as well as how often the cartridges will need to be replaced. In addition to gloves, eyewear, and possibly a respirator, you're also going to need some type of protective clothing to shield you from splashes when working with formaldehyde. Lab coats are the most common but they and any other clothing you wear must be impervious to water to fully protect you. If your protective clothing ever becomes contaminated, you should immediately dispose of it in your facility's authorized disposal area. Then, get a replacement before you start back to work. Another important part of working safely with formaldehyde is following proper work practices. The safety data sheet is key. Be sure to follow all of the recommended handling and storage procedures for the formaldehyde material that you're using. It's also extremely important that you follow all of your lab's recommended procedures. They may require special protective measures, depending on the work you're doing. Remember, these practices and procedures have been set up for your benefit. Maintaining proper ventilation in your work area is one of the most important safe work practices of all. Be sure to use lab hoods and other ventilation devices to keep any formaldehyde that's in the air out of your breathing zone. Not all hoods and air evacuation devices operate the same way, so make sure you know how yours works. And be sure to follow all the rules for the safe use of these devices.
Even if you've taken all the recommended precautions, you still need to know what to do in case an accident with formaldehyde occurs. No matter how careful we are, things can go wrong. You need to be prepared so that you can minimize the effects of any mishaps. To help you with this, your facility has developed a specific plan for dealing with accidents in your work area. But there are some things that should be done anytime an incident involving formaldehyde occurs. In the event of a small spill, soak up the liquid with an absorbent material like vermiculite or a spill pillow. Place the waste into a properly labeled and sealed container for later disposal. Do not attempt to handle large spills of formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is toxic and the fumes from even a dilute solution can overwhelm you. Alert other personnel in the area and vacate the laboratory immediately. Then call for assistance. If you come into contact with formaldehyde, it's important to act quickly. For skin contact, immediately remove any contaminated clothing. Wash the affected area with soap or mild detergent and large quantities of water for at least 15 to 20 minutes. If the area of contact is large, get to a safety shower. Remove all your clothing and stay under the water for at least 15 minutes. Be sure to get medical attention after any contact. If formaldehyde splashes into your eyes, water is again the first line of defense. Immediately go to your lab's eye wash station and wash the formaldehyde out of your eyes. Stay in the water for a minimum of 15 minutes. Hold your eyes open with your fingers to make sure the water covers the entire area. Then get medical attention as quickly as possible. If someone accidentally swallows formaldehyde, immediately provide them with drinking water. Keep the person warm and calm and get medical attention. In the event that someone inhales formaldehyde fumes, remove them from the exposure area and get them to fresh air. Then call for an ambulance. Keep the victim warm and calm until medical help arrives. You need to be careful when responding to any of these accident situations. Never enter an area that has a high concentration of formaldehyde. Wait for rescuers who have appropriate respiratory protection. Another way that the formaldehyde standard helps to ensure employee health and safety is through its medical surveillance plan. Under the plan, anyone who is adversely affected by exposure to formaldehyde must be given a temporary work assignment with reduced exposure to the chemical. After a reasonable amount of time has passed, the facility will then determine whether the affected employee should return to their old position, remain in the temporary job, or if other options need to be considered. If you have any questions about your facility's medical surveillance plan, see your supervisor. While formaldehyde can be hazardous, we do know how to work with it safely. Let's review. Know the hazards that formaldehyde presents. Be aware of the materials in your work area that contain formaldehyde. Know what you should do to protect yourself when you work with formaldehyde. And be prepared to act in case of a spill or other formaldehyde accident. Knowing the hazards that formaldehyde presents and complying with OSHA's formaldehyde standard when you use it will make working with formaldehyde easier and safer for everyone.